Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to the uh, to this talk uh, uh, hosted by Optica Students Chapter B. Uh, today we have our speaker, Dr. Thukrata Singh, and, uh, from IIT Pillai. So to give a brief description of our speaker, uh, Dr. Singh received his PhD degree in physics from <coughs> IIT Delhi in 2013. Uh, after PhD, he worked as a postdoctoral fellow at uh, Poha University of Science and Technology, South Korea, uh, for one year. And then at the Max Planck Institute of Intelligent System, uh, he was as a research scientist. And uh, currently, he is working as an assistant professor in uh, IIT Delhi. He is also the head of the Central Instrumentation Facility at there. And his research interest focused on artificial active matter systems and uh, the design of the micro robots and nano robots. Okay, so with this brief introduction, I would like to hand over the mic to Dr. Singh and uh, sir, please take it over from me and continue the talk. Thank you, Sain, for the nice introduction. And thanks first for inviting me for this talk. Uh, I want to, before starting, I want to share my screen. So please give me the, the right to share the screen and then. Uh, you share just and then. Just check whether it can be shared or not. Uh, right now, it's showing host disabled participant screen sharing. So please check it again. Uh, just give me. Yeah, uh, can you just check once now? Is it on the screen now? Yeah, we can see. Okay. So, uh, thanks again. Topic of uh, this talk is light driven micro and nano motors. So this topic basically belongs to a class of the, the, the keywords, I, I would say, the, the, the field, which you see the keywords like active matter, self propulsion, active colloids, micro robots, nano robots, uh, non equilibrium colloidal system. So this is a, the keywords that from which this particular uh, topic belongs to. So in this talk, talk, I will keep it a bit introductory. I will discuss uh, basic designs and what are the, the possible applications of this area and ex exactly what I have explored in this area. So I will start uh, from the basics, like a nanomotor basics or uh, micromotors. I will discuss it, what is the difference between micromotor and nanomotor, and what is the motor actually, a simple introduction of this uh, type of material, and what is the motivation behind these things, why we are designing these uh, nano or micromotors, what is the propulsion mechanism, how they, get, they move inside the fluid medium, and design strategies, how we can actually, well, once we know that this is the way to, to form some motor kind of thing, then how actually we can design them that I will discuss. And I will also discuss some of the, the applications that we have explored in this area uh, while working for uh, six or seven years. Some of the applications I will discuss that uh, I did when I was at the Max Planck Institute because I started this work there. And uh, some of them, we are as we are continuing this field here, uh, we have set up our labs here for working in this area. So some of the applications I will explore, I will discuss what we have done here at IIT Bilai. So I will start with this nanomotor basic. So first thing is what is the uh, nanomotor? The by nanomotor in a very simple term, I can define it as a any object or any anything which is of nanometer size and that can convert some form of energy. It can be a chemical energy, it can be a magnetic, electrical, whatever could be the energy. It converts that energy into the motion. So it has the ability to provide the motion at the small scale. That is the, the definition of motor to us, okay? And now when I say, sometimes I say nanomotor, sometimes I, I say micromotor. So the basic, there's no basic difference from the, the understanding of the, these structures. There is no basic difference in the physics of the propulsion or conversion of this energy into the motion. Only difference is the, of the size. 
So when you design your motors of nanometer size, considering some applications in the mind, then you call them nanomotor. And when they are bigger, then we call them micromotor. Of course, there is a there is a limitation that beyond some sizes, you cannot go. Otherwise, you will not see the propulsion. They will become a very large and the drag coefficient will be very high. So it will be very difficult to propel them. And again, if they are very, very small sizes, uh, let's say 20 nanometer, 10 nanometer, something in that range, then because of the lot of thermal fluctuations or the Brownian uh, diffusions, again, it will be very difficult to control their motion. So there is a safe range. There is a safe range from a few hundred nanometer to a few micrometer in which we normally design these motors. So once we know that what is the motor, then the immediate question is why do we need such kind of thing? I would say that there is always a fantasy in the mind in the scientist or the general public, we can say, to have something like a nano robot kind of thing, nano machine kind of thing that can actually do some useful work at the, the, the small scale. For example, uh, uh, people have envisioned that someday we can have some nano robot that can go in your body in the blood vessels and it can uh, kill the harmful bacteria selectively. It can uh, it, uh, let me take the laser. So, uh, like it can uh, treat the 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 defected or infected cells like a tumor cells etc. Or in the targeted drug delivery, they can be used. They can carry the drug and uh, deliver it to the target locations. Target. Uh, the drug delivery is a very hot topic in the biomedical science. Similarly, suppose uh, infertility is a very big problem. So they, they can suppose carry the low motility sperms and they can deliver them to the target position. So there they can assist. They can also assist in uh, capturing the pathogens and uh, harmful bio, harmful uh, pollutants from the water or through mediums. Similarly, lab on chip is another interesting area where these uh, micro motors or nanomotors can help in uh, a transport of the, the chemical molecules or biological species, etc. So all these uh, it, for all these applications, we are broadly talking about the nano machines or nano robots that are needed. But when we think about uh, the design of nano robots or nano machines, this kind of thing, then the first basic requirement is how we will provide them the motion. Functionality is a different thing. Of course, for each application, you can immediately think that they will, they will need a different functionality, that how they will carry the drug, how they will kill the bacteria, how they will capture the sperm. This is a, a separate thing. Very basic requirement here is how they will move. And this is the place where the nanomotors or micromotors come in the picture. When we see in the, the current technologies, you would see that we have the propulsion technology, or I would say the motor technology to provide the propulsion at different length scales or under the different mediums like air, water, surface. We have all the technologies available. But when we think about designing the nano or micro motors, then the, the, the thing is, the scale that we are talking here is, uh, you can have an idea from this uh, image. This is your hair and the scale we are talking about this type of technology is 100 times the base of your hair. So at this small scale, your conventional understanding of the motor or the existing technologies to design the motor for the, any propulsion or movement will not work. This is basically limited by two factors. One is the complex, complex structure and one is governed by the physics that defines as the law of Reynolds number. Uh, briefly, first is the, you can see that for any motor, you have so many components like the shaft and rotor and coils and all these things you will need for the, uh, the motor design. Having so many components at the nano scale is simply impossible. So if, even, if you, if, if, even if you start thinking about designing a motor by your conventional understanding or conventional technologies, then it will not work because you cannot put so many components at such a small scale. So this is the first thing. If you are uh, still, if you still want to explore the, the design, then the second problem immediately comes from the the basic physics. That is the Reynolds number problem. What is this? Uh, Reynolds number is basically uh, whenever you put a flow of uh, object. Uh, I assume most of you, uh, you all, you all know about this uh, physics problem. 
uh, when you put an object, uh, suppose let's say a colloid, you put in the, the floor and it's uh, allowed to move, then it will ex experience two different type of forces. One is the inertial force and one is the, the viscous force. And ratio of these forces is defined as the Reynolds number. So by Reynolds number, by the value of Reynolds number, we, we will know that which force, inertial force or viscous force, which force is more uh, effective or predominant. By taking the values of these two forces for this system, in a simplified form, the calculation of Reynolds numbers uh, comes something like this. Here is a, it's a raw VL upon eta. So raw is the density, L is the length, uh, length or size of the, the object, and eta is the eta is the viscosity of the medium, and V is the velocity of the particle. So if, if you see this formula again, then you can see that if you keeping all the parameters constant, like you don't change the viscosity of the float, you don't change the density, anything you don't change, you just change the size and you reduce the L to the uh, micrometer or nanometer. Then Reynolds number will reduce significantly. It means the inertial force component is uh, reducing and viscous force becomes more dominating. This is the, the quantitative way to understand it. What actually is happening is inertial forces are becoming ineffective. It means Newton's laws of motion that you uh, use for understanding the, the motion, basically, they will not work at this scale. The problem is, you see, all the motors, they basically uh, uh, use the third law or second law, whatever, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, provide the motion to these uh, objects. That will not work. So it is simply, you can take it like this, like a, suppose in a pool, a human can easily swim because his uh, L is, let's say, one meter or one and a half meter. So he can easily swim in a pool. But if you replace the human by a bacteria, then in the same pool, a bacteria will feel a lot of difficulty. It, the work bacteria will, uh, will experience the same pool of water as the pool of honey. So, because the viscous forces will increase for the, the bacteria because its size is reduced significantly. So, when the, so we can say in the nutshell that when you reduce the size significantly down to the nanoscale or micronoscale, then swimming becomes very difficult because inertial forces are not effective at that, that scale and you have to rely only on the viscous forces. So we have to... Excuse me, sir. Yeah, just, uh, just can you please uh, tell again that why uh, at small scale the viscous force is uh, much more? Actually, maybe I missed. Uh, what I'm discussing is uh, simply I'm taking up in terms of the Reynolds number. Okay. And Reynolds number, I'm taking it as the inertial forces as the viscous forces is the standard form of the Reynolds number. Mm -hmm. And if we take the values of uh, these forces, the just the, the relations, then this simply comes out to be rho VL upon eta. We, we just use the, the viscous forces we take from the Stokes law and uh, for inertial forces, we take this uh, relation. So this comes out to be, I mean, this is the standard de uh, definition of Reynolds number for the small scale yeah. uh, objects. So in this case, raw V and eta, suppose we are not changing and we are just changing L. We are reducing L from uh, suppose uh, one meter to one micrometer. So it's going to be reduced by 10 to the power six times. So in that case, this L will be reduced significantly. Let's say, uh, uh, so for human, I wrote some of the values. Yeah, yeah. This is for human. It's around ten to the power four. For fishes, it's around ten to the power two. And for the bacteria, it will be ten to the power minus four. This is the value of Reynolds number. So when Reynolds number is going down, it because it's a ratio, so it means the viscous forces are increasing. Only viscous forces will help you to swim if you can uh, use them. Inertial forces will be ineffective. Yeah. Thank you. So, so, so we have to, because in a, all our existing technologies are based on the inertial forces. They use the, the Newton's laws. So, so we have to think about some alternate ways to get the motion at the small scale. That is what we got from the understanding of the Reynolds number problem. So alternate ways, one of the 
example because for whenever we are in, the, in this type of uh, uh, troubles then always we find some solution from some natural system we see here that this is the protein motor it is carrying the vesicle uh, they know they usually carry these vesicles inside the cells this is the protein motor system and this kinesin protein is uh, moving over the microtubule shaft and here actually this is uh, formed by like this different uh, the alternate arrangements of different chemical uh, molecules so this is site specific attachment is allowing this uh, protein to move ahead over this microtubule shaft uh, in the video this is an artistic uh, in, uh, uh, video made of this kinesin protein moving inside the cell you can see they are they are moving this is a the big blue color balloon is actually the vesicle is and the, this is a protein motor it is carrying the vesicle over the shaft so this happens every time inside our cells while protein motors uh, carry the liquid vesicles within the cells so here this strategy of site specific attachment was used by by chemists in designing first time i would say the the molecular motors it was not only the site specific attachment like in some of the examples they or problems they use the site specific attachment in some of the cases this was also assisted by the binding and twisting of the chemical molecules or the uh, the bonds and they used it to design the nano cars and uh, uh, moving these uh, molecular shafts and all these things and this idea was well appreciated and they got the nobel prize in 2016 for this uh, discovery so this was uh, more like a chemistry or biology so far I mean, in terms of the efforts that were made for the uh, design of the, the motors. For, and for physicists, what could be a simple design that, uh, let's see this thing. So suppose we have a colloid, a plain spherical colloid, and you put it in the uh, uh, some uh, liquid medium. And when it is a uniform chemical around the colloid, then it will remain static or just it will just do its brownian motion this is the inherent property but let's say there is a chemical gradient exerted chemical gradient external chemical gradient around the particle something like this then what will happen this is a instable system so this is a the, again the basic property of the system to bring back the equilibrium and this time it will try to bring back the chemical equilibrium and there will be, be a slip flow we call it slip flow or it's a it's a flow around the particle uh, to bring back the chemical equilibrium uh, back and when this slip flow starts around the particle the slip flow is actually governed by some of the these these formulas where delta c is the chemical gradi gradient and this is the uh, the, the coefficient of uh, osmotic or diffusive quality and t is the temperature r is the size of this particle eta and eta is the viscosity so by setting these parameters, we can set the, the, the velocity of these slip flows. And particle, because the flow is in this direction and particle starts to move in this direction with the opposite velocity. This is a very standard diffusive forest. is known for decades and people use it for sorting the particles or seeing the movement of particles under the external chemical gradient, diffusive forest. Now for a movement assume, we have a particle with two different materials on the opposite surfaces like let's say active material and the passive material on the opposite surfaces these type of particles are called janus particle what does that mean by active material i will just discuss in the the coming slides these are called the janus particles after the name of uh, roman god janus who has two faces look to look in the opposite sides past and future so now let's assume the active part side which uh, the side which has the active uh, component is uh, let's say chemically active so when you put this particle inside a chemical then it has the ability to convert the chemical into some other form so because the reaction chemical reaction is happening only on the one side so eventually what will happen it will form a chemical gradient so once this will happen then chemical gradient is formed it means again from the same diffusive forestic phenomena what will uh, what will happen there will be chemical there will be a flow around the particle a slip flow and it will start moving only difference this time is in the previous slides i discussed that you put a external chemical gradient 
and in this case what is happening the gradient is formed by the particle itself because of its own chemical activity so this is a self diffusiophoresis or self phoresis sometimes termed as so in this self chemical gradient or self out of the self diffusiophoresis the particle is moving so this was the first design of the the motors proposed experimentally shown by this group and also theoretically it was uh, uh, discussed very well discussed by the hauser and goldstein in group in 2007 so in this design they they suggested to use some materials like as active component now you have to just think about some material that is chemically active and some chemical in which this material do some reaction like a platinum suppose it you put platinum on this side then it reacts with uh, peroxide and it uh, does this type of reaction on one side other side you can choose anything like it can be a silica or ps or pmmb any anything is fine so this was first design they are moving these are the small uh, around 1 micrometer diameter motors and they are moving in a uh, chemical medium platinum motors in the uh, peroxide medium so motor is ready but the problem is you see in the initial design i would say because it was in the 2007 first design was proposed the immediate problem that we can see here is uh, because we are using platinum and peroxide Uh, as a fuel so there is no control control means there is no control on the switch you cannot switch it on and off according to your requirements and you cannot control its speed because chemical reaction will go at its own speed once you set the peroxide once you put the platinum then you cannot control the chemical reaction or the activity and you cannot uh, on demand <coughs> or oh, sorry on demand you cannot turn on and off the so when we are design going to design some motor kind of thing and in mind we have the future applications like a nano machines or nano robots then these basic uh, requirements are must we should have the control on the activity so how this can be tackled there is one of, one way to solve this is what we did in our lab we replace this active side with a photocatalytic tio2 material so tio2 is a, a semiconductor wide band gap material and uh, when you shine it with the uv light of the right wavelength matching the band gap of the tio2 then it generates the electron and hole pairs and when you put it in the peroxide medium then it following these uh, two uh, half reactions it decompose the peroxide only on the one side and it forms the chemical gradient and the particle will move according to or as per the 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 mechanism that i have discussed before so TiO2 provided a very good control. Like here, you can see in the video, these are the particle. Initially, they are doing Brownian motion, and when I turn the light on, then they start moving in the random directions. So it means we have got the control on switching on and off. This kind of control we have we have got with with these motors. You can see in terms of plots uh, when the light off, then all the the trajectory of all the particles i have put at the center 0 0 position in this x y plane so this this is not the trajectory of one particle these are these it represents the trajectories of many particles around seven or eight particles minimum so when the light is off then they all are confined in a very small region just doing their uh, characteristic brownian motion when you turn the light on then you can see the larger trajectory they start moving in random all possible random directions and since the photocatalytic activity that is happening on the tio2 side is <clears throat> governed by the intensity of light so when you increase or decrease the intensity of light then you can also actually tune the velocity of the particles velocity of the moving particles or the motors so from these two plots we can see that we have got two controls by using the light driven motors one is we can turn it on and off as per our demand and second is we can control their speed by changing the intensity of the light we have the we, we use the glancing angle deposition method i am not going in the detail of this because i want to uh, focus Excuse on me, the sir. yes i have a question in the last slide so what is here the p max p max is just a just a power no i mean uh, is the velocity is reaching to a high value it's optic 
yes sorry p max is the optical power that this is the maximum opti optical power that we could get with the with our lamp or light source okay okay so you cannot go beyond that no because no it, it can definitely the in terms of velocity if you can change the source light source then you can go beyond but in so one experiment is, is it strictly increasing function or it should reach to some saturation or something uh, no 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 it will it not forever because uh, there there will be a limitation like uh, you are you are by increasing the intensity you definitely generate more electron and hole pairs but the reaction is also governed by the availability of the the peroxide molecules around around the the micro motor okay so at some point it will saturate okay yeah thank you okay so i just briefly wanted to show you that uh, the the technique that we use for design of these things is a glancing angle deposition technique it's a ev assisted physical vapor deposition method with this method we can form different shapes like we can form the spherical uh, motors as well as we can form the rod like motors and some other helical and some other designs are also possible but we are not exploring them right now so rods we can make of different sizes and different diameters just to give you a a feel like uh, how close we are to the uh, natural systems you can see that these are the two different type of bacteria normally found in the nature like a rod like or spherical like and our micro motors or micro robots they we, we are able to form very similar to them and you can see in the the scale they have the similar shapes as well as the similar sizes so it shows that how <laughs> uh how well our deposition techniques or fabrication techniques can form this uh, uh, active systems at such a, a small scale similar to the biological uh, uh, systems or bacterial systems so now we have the the motors ready with the i won't i won't say a full control because full control means the guidance also external guidance also comes there but we have some partial control on the activity and we try to explore these motors for uh, some applications first is to uh, think about uh, first is to form the uh, the self assembly by these motors this the idea was basically to form the dynamic or reconfigurable materials so when we say the self assembly then we all know that uh, the self assembly of colloids are uh, used uh, for several years to form the colloidal structures uh, they they can be used for the plasmonic studies or as a template or as a nano structure or micro structures for several applications or colloidal assemblies uh, self assemblies are also used to form the alloys mm -hmm. or uh, the glasses better to say glasses or crystals colloidal crystals uh, that can be used for just study of the phase transition behaviors or as a photonic crystals etc so these are the very popular Uh, approaches colloidal assembly to form this kind of uh, things but the conventional ways to form the colloidal assembly they have some limitations like uh, overall process is very slow it takes a few hours to several days sometimes to form the the crystals or glasses or the proper structures in a in a system colloidal system and second problem is that it needs a critical particle density like uh, those who works on the the glasses or uh, crystals they know that they they must have some 60% or 70% colloidal density in the system otherwise they will never see the the glasses or crystal formation third is the that is very important there is no reconfigurability reconfigurability means suppose you form a some structure let's say you form a glass colloidal glass and you want to next at next moment you want to change it into the the crystal perfectly aligned then it's very difficult it's uh, not possible simply or if you want to make this this triangular structure and you want to go back to the 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 a diamond kind of structure then it's not possible so once you make something then it's formed you cannot reconfigure or change it according to your demand so we will see that how these problems can be addressed using the the motors in the colloidal system so this is the equilibrium system equilibrium means all the particles are here the passive particles you will see these are silica particles and they are just doing the uh, pure brownian motion and at because here the particle density is 8% and at this very low 
I would say this is a very low uh, considering the 60 or 70 percent required for the crystal glass formation. This is very low, and at this particle density, they will never form any structure in this system. Second is our micromotor system. Here in the same system, I have added some of the micromotors. You, these black half dot, these you are seeing, these are the micromotors added into this system. Now we will see that how the things will change. When I turn the light on, you see they start moving. When they move, they also collect the surrounding passive particles. They form the small crystallites. Crystallites are further joining by fusion, and you, would, you can see that they are forming the, the small crystals. And interestingly, the whole activity survive only until the light is turned on. When you turn the light off, then the, the structure melts down. Now it's melting down and the particle goes back to the original Brownian state. So this is, if you, if you turn the light on again, again here, then you will form the structure again. So this is something, the reversibility. You can, you can form or melt the structures according to your requirements. How it is happening is a very basic way I, I would discuss that. Again, as I discussed in the starting that when there's a chemical gradient and the particle, then particle follows the chemical gradient by the diffusive movements. Here in this case, what is happening? Chemical gradient is formed by the, this micro motor or the active particle and surrounding passive particles are, are following this chemical gradient and they are uh, attracting towards the, the active site. And once it comes close, then it is stick to the, the particle and it is moving. So it collects the, the another particle and in this way, they, they grow in the size. Uh, some of things I'm skipping here, just because of time. So in this case, you would see that the interaction, the interaction strength between the uh, micro motors and the, the surrounding particle depends on the intensity of light because the whole activity is governed by the light. So light is the main parameter here. So once we know this thing, then we can use the intensity of light to tune the interaction strength between the active and passive particles. And this can be further used to control the size of these structures. Like you can see here, initially we have a bigger structure. We reduce the intensity, we chop off the second layer, only one layer is now left. We increase the intensity again. We collect the particles again, and we again form the, the bigger structure. So this we can do in a reversible manner as per, as per our requirement. So we can tune the size of the structures. Further, by uh, changing the, the, the size ratio of the passive particle and the micro motors, we can form different type of, any questions? So, uh, yeah. Uh, so for this type of assembly, does we have uh, like, I don't know, is there any size limitations of active and the uh, passive particles, like a specific size of active particle and can only attract the surrounding particles, or there should be a size of surrounding particles to get attracted by the active particles? Uh, as, as long as they are able to move or they have their Brownian fluctuations, and they are uh, they are not very far from the the micro motor they will form the assembly so if suppose we take a very big particle like a 5 micrometer or 10 micrometer then obviously it, it it's a very very big particle so it will not attract by the micro motors it will feel that it will feel the interaction but uh, to move that particle we need the larger forces from the stokes law we will we can calculate this so, so there is a limitation, of course, we cannot go beyond the, the particular sizes. Similarly, if we go very to the nano structures like a hundred nanometer or below, then Brownian fluctuation will be too high. So a uh, particle will, of course, they will be collected, but keeping them uh, attached will be a challenge because the thermal noise will be, uh, will be too much. Okay, and the other question is, uh, do we also have the limitation on the size of the TIO2 layer deposited in order to have these uh, uh, That is actually a, a simply governed by the this is a, a semiconductor property of this material. Like if you have too thin, then you will you will generate a very small number of lepton and holes, so your activity will be small and your uh, swimming speed will be will be lower. 
and on the higher side there is no problem you can go 200 nanometer 300 nanometer whatever you want but then it, then you will get the saturation like after what 200 nanometer you will not see any increment in the photocatalytic activity because in simple words the only electron and holes generated near the surface can participate in the reaction so if you have if you have two thick layer then the electron and holes generated at the bottom part will not be able to reach to the surface so this is the limitation otherwise there is no problem you can go um, the last question so the yes. particles that are getting attached they can be of any material or uh, there's some refractive index uh, matching or like any limitation on dielectric uh, constant or refractive index of the material actually it's uh, it's it's a, uh, decided by the zeta potential of particle because okay. uh, because if if you see here that this same particle can move towards the positive gradient or negative gradient depending on its interaction of this chemical with the surface so this is actually defined by the zeta potential of this particle so so if we have got nanoparticles will they get get a task uh, you mean assembly will be faster yeah i'm just wondering uh, no it's not that straightforward because assembly is also as i said I mean, if you see the diffusion coefficient of the the particle then uh, there's a r and in the rotational there's a rq in the denominator so if you reduce the r then diffusion coefficient also increases significantly especially the rotational increase significantly so uh, capturing them and to uh, keep them captured is uh, might be challenging if you are below 100 nanometer above it is fine okay thank you Yes, sir. Uh, I have a query. Yes. Uh, you told that uh, the the assembly is uh, dependent on the power of the your light source. So, is it uh, is there an upper limit of the uh, power? Like uh, because the assembly grows bigger and bigger if you are increasing the power. But is it true for all the power, or there is some upper limit? I think I think I I discussed it. Uh, previously <clears throat> there is a, a no such upper limit but you will not see the continuous increment in the speed there will, will be a saturation okay because the the speed is decided by not only the power but also the availability of the chemical molecules in the in, in, in vicinity of the micromotors so if you just put a very small amount of peroxide in there then no matter what is the power you cannot always increase the the speed okay so you have to you have to supply the the chemical molecules also in the same ratio only then you can expect the the continuous increment in the power okay so, uh, hello sir yes i want to ask uh, is there any thermal component to uh, this force that these particles are experiencing you mean the temperature like, yeah like do do the particle heat up or something it uh, it might be there i'm not i i'm not ignoring it completely but uh, it's a very unlikely that thermal component is a dominating factor because uh, in this overall reaction whatever the reaction is happening here the, in the in the decomposition of peroxide over by the tio2 there is no heat generation so that's why we are ignoring it but we are not ignoring it 100% so okay. whenever we whenever we make the theoretical model then we pick the one which is more promising okay also sir you said that the uh, in diffusion diffuser for us is the particle can move either towards the concentration like higher gradient or towards the lower gradient yes. uh, depending on the zeta potential uh, so as you showed previously mm -hmm. in a slide that uh, concentration the particle the uh, the slip flow is like from higher side to the lower side the slip flow on the surface of the particle so like the slip flow will remain the same whatever the zeta potential no 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 slip no? slip flow will also actually direction is will be defined by the slip flow okay so so direction of slip flow will switch and then the direct the movement direction of movement will switch okay okay so it's not possible to have the the slip flow direction in the same same direction and switching the the movement direction
Okay, I was okay. Okay, so uh, so we saw that we can tune the size of these structures, dynamic structures, and further by choosing the size ratios of these passive and micro motors, we can also tune the shapes of these structures or the unit cells. I am saying here, like a square, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, different different shapes we can form. I am saying it unit cell because. Uh, when you let them grow at the full intensity, then they 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 collect and they form the the structures like hexagon and square. They can form the the crystal structures and pentagon is uh, uh, the by the shape you will understand that it will always form the amorphous structure. In hexagon, probability of forming the crystal is always uh, high because it always form the ordered state. In case of a square. Structure, square lattice structure is, is interesting. Like you can see in this video, if you form the structure at the low intensity, then what will happen? Uh, let, sorry, when you form it at the high intensity, then interaction strength will be high. So particle can attach at the random locations. Like here, they are they are arranging at the the random locations, and you cannot stop them because uh, they have the ability to attach. And Finally, what, what you get is the amorphous state because this was formed at the high interaction strength and attachment was the random. The same thing when you form at a low intensity, so the particles can attach only, there's interaction between only immediate micromotor and passive is possible. No random attachment is possible. Then you see, this will form a perfect crystal lattice. Now it's formed finally. So, this is something interesting because in the same particle system, as per your requirement, by controlling the intensity of light, you can form amorphous or the, the perfect crystal state. And uh, those who uh, work on the colloidal, um, uh, the glasses or crystals, they understand that going back from one state to another back state is very difficult. And from the solid state uh, point of view also, normally we get the amorphous state and then by annealing or Heating, we go to the crystal crystalline state, and then going back to the amorphous state is impossible. So this is the the micromotor system that uh, provides us the reversible or reconfigurable uh, uh, system, which can be controlled by the intensity of light. Okay, so so far you saw that these party micromotors have the ability to uh, carry the particles, but if I want to use them for transportation, then it's difficult. Still, it's uh, difficult because uh, they don't have the, the external control. Like when you say transportation, then they must have the ability to pick it from somewhere and to, to, to basically deliver it to the uh, predefined location. Only then it, it is called the transportation. And the second thing is you saw that I discuss only the passive particles as the silica particles. If you want to use them for various applications, then they must have the ability to interact with the biological systems also, like a bacteria or cells. Because in the in the very starting in the motivation, I showed you that at some day we can use them to kill or transport the defected cells or kill the, kill the bacteria inside the the system, biological system, or to to help them to capture and uh, detect the bacteria, etc. So they must have this ability. So here, what we did. We added a magnetic coating uh, before the TiO2 material, <coughs> and we put some gold nanoparticles over the surface. I will discuss the what is the the, the use of these two uh, one by one. When you put the magnetic material, then what happens? Uh, this is a ferromagnetic material, and you pre-magnetize it, and and you put it in the external magnetic field. Then it will it will feel the the external field, and it will uh, reorient or try to align itself according to the external magnetic field. So, like uh, this is a uh, you can see just an example. Like you can allow the micro motors after this coating, nickel coat, magnetic coating, you can allow them to move in the random direction. When you apply the field, then you can ask them to move in a directed path. You when you turn light as well as magnetic field both, then it it goes to the ideal or uh, Ideal state or Brownian state, you can call it as a delivery point, and you can repeat these cycles. You can see this in the 
in the in the video like it is carrying randomly and then you switch on the magnetic field it's going in a particular direction and when it's a uh, it's now it's a it's, it's a delivered this cargo this is you can treat it as a delivery point and this was as a pickup point and when you turn the light on again then it will start moving in some other direction again the field is on so this this is just a, a demonstration or the proof of concept that these things but my motors can be used for pickup point delivery sort of applications of these things and the use of the cold nanoparticle is gold nanoparticle has a very good uh, wonderwall interactions uh, so they can be used the wonderwall interactions provided by the gold nanoparticles can be used to pick up the biological or these bacterial uh, cells like here you will see these the rod like things are the actually the e coli e coli bacteria and this micro motor is capturing this e coli uh, one by one it will it will capture like uh, now it has captured to e coli so it has the the after gold functionalization it can also capture the e coli we, we just choose the e coli because it's a uh, non pathogenic bacteria so this can be used for uh, normal colloids as well as the bacterial cells for pickup and transportation and uh, movement under the, the microfluids so one other interesting application i will show here is we know that in the natural biological systems like a uh, protein system uh, inside our body cells also they have the the ability to change their viscosity according to the demand and like our cells have has this ability they can control their the viscosity of the inside medium and this they they do this basically to control the fluid flows inside as well as across the cell membranes and this comes from the ability of these proteins to cross link and form this network kind of uh, system and once it is network on cross link state then they uh, change the viscosity now in this case the viscosity of the medium will rise increase and it, when they, it is, this is the homogeneous state then viscosity will be lower so we thought that our this uh, micro motors that have the ability to capture or interact with the surrounding passive particles can be used for this type of uh, uh, forming the active rheological artificial active rheological mediums and here we tried this uh, the micro motors in the this this medium is fully filled with the uh, silica or uh, passive particles and it's mixed with the micro motors when you turn the light on here then you see that this also forms the similar cross linked or network network state and from go going from this dispersed or homogeneous to this cross linked or network state we also see the rise in the viscosity like when you turn the light on then viscosity increases by 10 times 10 to 100 millipascal and this is a light off then it goes down and because it's a covered it's a governed by the intensity or the light so you can do it in multiple cycles repeated so this is actually inspired by the biological system and active rheological mediums is an interesting area and it has some applications also like uh, at a small scale suppose you want to control the the motion of the objects like some object or bacteria or something is moving in a fluid and you want to control its motion then how can you control you don't have the 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 braking system like in the bigger device bigger more uh, moving devices we have so here we can control it by changing the viscosity of the medium like for just to show the proof of concept what we did we took this magnetic uh, rod and by applying the uniform magnetic rotating magnetic field from outside using the helmholtz coil we rotated rotated this uh, rod it's a magnetic rod made of the nickel and when you rotate it in the initially the light is off viscosity is very less so it it it, it rotates freely but when you increase the light or increase the light intensity when you turn on the activity of the motors then viscosity of the medium changes and it because of the viscosity increase this rod rotation stops i will now i will show you the video now it first it's rotating and when we turn the light viscosity is changing it's increasing and finally the rod rod stops rotating so this is just the example that shows that we can control the 
the motion of the small scale objects in the fluid medium by controlling the rheological or viscosity uh, properties of the medium. Another interesting thing I would uh, quickly show you because my time is almost uh, finishing. Uh, how we can use them for the study of collective behaviors. There are several uh, uh, reports in theory as well as in the experiment. People are now exploring them for the study of the collective behaviors and new uh, behaviors people are capturing in this type of artificial active matter systems. We picked one of the problem. There's a no perfect resemblance. So please don't try to uh, make the connection, the, the, the strong connection, but this is just a motivation here. Like uh, you see, it's the zebra of his embryo. And in the starting of the embryo, the, all the cells are uniformly distributed. And then after a fraction of seconds or in the very early stage, what happens of the spontaneous symmetry breaking happens and these uh, cells, they set a flow, the symmetric flows they start and then they, they, they form this type of patterns. So why they are doing this? This is actually redistribution of cells that is happening here. This is called the morphogenesis. It's a very crucial phenomenon because all the cells in our body, like a brain cells, heart cells, lung cells, they are of the different type. And when the embryo grows, then these, the, this type of flows uh, uh, ensure the, the proper distribution of cells at the proper locations. So these are the very, very important thing. Otherwise, if, if, the, if the distribution doesn't happen, then the, the proper or organs will not grow properly. What we picked from here is, if you have a sub, such type of a uniform homogeneous system filled with active units, then can when we turn the activity on here, we saw a very similar thing. We saw that the spontaneous, they, they are breaking the symmetry and they are forming the, the flows and the unidirect, you see they are forming the, the vortex and it's almost very similar to this flow. Here, this is the, the collective behavior of these motors because what, what we observed is when you have the very low density of these motors, then they have the ability to move in the random directions. We saw it experimentally. We don't see any, any flow, a directional flow. We just see the random movement of the motors. But when you increase the density of these motors, then what happens? They come very close to each other. Each micromotor has a slip flow around its body and their slip flows start to couple with, with the surrounding motors. And that coupling actually uh, tries to reorient the direction of these motors and tries to uh, bring them to the, the common state. This is one, as one, uh, one possible aspect. Second is because we have the liquid interface in our uh, the chamber. One side is the liquid two, liquid, another side is the liquid one, let's say. And they are releasing, each motor is releasing some chemicals. And when they are close to the interface, then these chemicals, let's say more oxygen is produced or uh, peroxide is consumed on one side. So this chemical gradient will create a surface tension. And once this, suppose this micrometer is here, it is releasing some chemical at this interface, then this will create a surface tension. And this surface tension will induce the Marangoni flows. And Marangoni flows also look very similar to the flows that we so I mean, these are the theoretical uh, uh, trajectories of the flow generated inside the, the circular chamber. These all trajectories are generated only for the single particle. And when you have many particles, then these flows get strengthened and they form a, uh, the state that we saw in the video. So I'm not going in the detail of uh, the mechanism here. This, you can, if you're interested, then you can discuss it later. So this actually, this was the experimental evidence that uh, these micromotors 
or the nano motors they can be used to study some of the the bi crucial biological systems and study their collective behaviors uh, with this i just want to show you that what uh, quickly that what we are doing in our lab right now as i showed you that we have the ability to control the sizes we can form different different shapes and sizes of the micro motors we are trying to control their uh, trajectories that sometimes rotational sometimes translation okay i will not go in the detail now that how we are actually doing this because this is uh, uh, under progress works but we, you can see that this is a translational motion of the for the same particles and here we have trained them to move in the rotational so they can be used for local mixing of the fluids or like a stirrer or something can be used and they can be used for the long range uh, transportation here you can see that by just uh, casting the the pattern now they are doing brownian but when we cast some uh, pattern here like a circular or linear we can control their trajectories again so what 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 in in both these problems what what is common is we are trying to externally uh, control the movement of uh, motors <coughs> for uh, some specific or the applications because <coughs> this is the the second challenge now that how you can guide them because now the motors have the ability to move if you functionalize them then they can do some work but how you will guide them to go from one place to other place efficiently one way was applying the magnetic field but application of magnetic field may always not be the the, the valid or the the good solution so we have to think about the alternate ways so that that's what we are interested in in our lab so this is one of the way <clears throat> and uh, with this i stop here now the time is almost up so if i summarize then uh, janus particles can be used as the janus particle with the two components one is active and one is passive they can be used as the micro motors or nano motors uh, depending on their size we call them micro or nano material combination is important we have to think about the, the active uh, especially the active component what is the material that we are going to choose that defines they are going to be a normal motor or the light driven motor when you <clears throat> the motors can self propel in a fuel uh, and they must uh, you must have to think about the ability to guide them externally one way i discuss is the magnetic way few way other ways are in progress i just i just showed you in the last slides and we saw that when the micro motors are ready then we can use them for different type of applications uh, delivery transportation and the uh, design of new reconfigurable materials sensing also is one of the possible way and the collective study of collective behaviors and active matter and <clears throat> lab on chip kind of things also you can use them there so with this i stop here thank you if you are interested then you can also check the our our group website thank you thank you very much sir for this interesting talk and this this is really outstanding uh, i have a question uh, can you go back to the slide where you make, you saw some pattern uh, say, say again sir uh, you saw some pattern where the particles are active particles are moving this one then some you you impose some pattern then the particle yeah. come up. so yeah. what what kind of pattern it is uh, this is a light pattern okay with some slm or something else uh, it's a dmd okay so i mean then the uh, active particles are guided to move or, or follow the pattern right yeah 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 so this is a light pattern formed by by, by dmd and uh, they are just following the means sometimes they enter in the shadow means the gray area is the shadow and brighter area is the light so sometimes they move in the shadow because of thermal fluctuations but mostly they follow the the light okay so we are we are able to see their linear as well as circular uh, movement mm -hmm. now we are trying more uh, different shapes and how dynamic patterns also we are trying that how we can actually uh, train them to move uh, following the the dynamic patterns or complex patterns 
and one more question can you just elaborate what is marangoni flow i have heard this term but i don't understand what it means exactly uh, marangoni flow is a it actually is a surface tension means uh, if there is a instability or uh, non uniform surface tension around the the of any any particle is particles also you see marangoni and uh, osmosis diffusive forces these all things are very interconnected so, okay, so whenever it is the flow inside the part, i mean it is a droplet kind of thing or it is a particle it's a, it's a it's 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 a it's a droplet of water mm. with some peroxide as a fuel and a lot of micro motors and the outside is the oil okay so it's a typical water droplet in oil kind of system but this water droplet is a, a sessile so it's a standing on the surface it's the, not the suspended okay and the flow is inside that droplet uh, actually when I, when the flow is inside the droplet then mm -hmm. obviously there will be a flow outside also because it's interface okay. yeah because in, if interface is solid then it it, it will not go to the other side but if interface is liquid then obviously yeah and yeah. depending on the viscosity the the strength of flow will be different in oil you right. will see a very small small flow yeah. but it it, it 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 is so yeah we saw it with some tracer particles in the oil so that was some control experiment i remember thank you sir. and if, now it is for the audience if they have any question they can sir i have a question Yes, sir, regarding the biological nerve cells, there is a transportation of signal through the motor neurons. So that principle is similar to the principle that we discussed here or something different and how okay. it is different. See, biological systems are very complex. So they have the signal transmission ability, quorum sensing and several sensing abilities are there. So that's why I, I made it clear in the starting that we cannot make a strong connection between <clears throat> these two. We are not saying that after knowing this uh, fluid flows, we are able to solve the problem of the, the, the Zebrafis embryo or an, we, we have the better understanding of that system. We are treating it as a motivation that if you have a, some non-equilibrium uh, co uh, components or units inside this kind of uh, spherical uh, chamber, then they also in the artificial systems also they can produce this flows. So region might not be exactly same because biological system again are very complex. In our case, the the mechanism might be different, <clears throat> but the final effect that we are getting is similar. So we can think about some applications or. So, sir, up to how much length we can transport this signal? Uh, <clears throat> see, uh, you mean one cell to another cell? That's what you are saying, is that? Yes, yes. Okay. 